I wanted to take a brief moment to talk about marking up a Soul Winner's New Testament or a Soul Winner's Bible. These things would apply across both of them. And again, I start with why. Why do we want to mark this up? Well, number one, we want it to be easy to quickly find and show people passages or scriptures without, you know, distracting them, making them, okay, is it seven or eight or where are we at? It just makes it a lot uh, faster and people are less distracted. It's easier for them to see the truth uh, quickly and more easily. Um, we want to be able to do that. If we're at someone else's door, we're on their time. Uh, we want to be, you know, even more so than if we were in church necessarily or just discussing a passage. So, you know, that's the importance and the reasoning for it. Uh, when it comes to marking, there are several things. You know, number one is getting to the verse itself. And for that, I like to use these tabs. Um, you can get these anywhere. You know, these are you know, all over. They have tabs of different materials, different uh, colors, different sizes. You know, you can get uh, these cheap little things from... You know, wherever, I don't even know where I got these ones. You know, it's a paper material, and they're going to wear out. They're going to bend. They're, they're not so great, but they work, you know. But there are other things. You know, you can get, you know, if you get the posted ones, they've got different sizes. You've got these tiny ones, and these are more of a plastic material that will last longer. Again, this is a little small. I found that it's a lot easier to, you know, mess with them if you get the bigger you know sizes. So you've got this one. You've got these, and I've used these for, you know, quite some time there is time but i ended up moving to these just because they're faster to grab and you know move to and so that's what i've done now in my personal marking system i don't need to have them different colors i know which one is which and i only mark three of them with these but once i get them properly marked i can just grab that one right there and you're right at that passage in that verse that you're trying to share so it's you know quick and easy if there's any hesitation it's only because i'm trying to make sure this stays in front of the you know, in front of the camera as much as possible here. But, you know, the bigger the tab, the more it sticks out, of course, the better it's going to be. And I don't know, I, I don't, I can be picky. I don't necessarily like the look of them sticking out, but it does work. Now, you'll see here, there's actually two on this one right here. There's a, a second back one. And it's, it's kind of odd, but, you know, when I go to the, and I'll talk in a moment about the verses that I mark, but when I go to the Romans Road or when I go to the gospel presentation, it's not necessarily the Romans Road, but... <clears throat> I start here, and most of the verses are pretty close that I'll use. Even, you know, I'll use Ephesians, I'll use other, you know, but most of them are pretty close. But when I get to that, this is the second death, the passage that I use there, and I'll talk about more about why this is here. I actually put this here as an illustration. But when I go to Revelation, it can take a little bit to get from Romans to Revelation. And especially when you get to the end of the, the book, it can be kind of, you get caught in those last few pages, etc., uh, so I found that it's easier to have, you know, this is the beginning of <clears throat> the gospel presentation. But when I get to that uh, one in Revelation that's a little bit further away, I can grab the back side here with this, and it gets me to it. So again, just a little trick that I do. So I've got one, two, and three. They get me where I need to go most commonly. But if I'm in the middle of a gospel presentation, and I'm in Romans, and I want to get quickly to Revelation, I can go backwards and go this way. What is this for? Uh, I'll talk about that in a minute. Let's talk about marking the verses. Okay, so... Here we are. We've got this verse. Bad example, not necessarily the greatest marking, but you know, I've got it underlined. I've got it highlighted. Personally, I don't think I need to have it underlined, or most of mine don't even have underlined. Highlighting is what, to me, makes it stand out quickest. You know, for your eye to grab and and see, etc. When it comes to highlighting, there's several options you have. You have, you know, the traditional highlighter, of course. I don't know. This is Bic, whatever. Personally, I found that these ones, the liquid, the ink, whatever you want to call it. They bleed through these thin Bible pages. They just, and, and I'm picky about that, you know, especially when you're going to the other page. You, know, you don't want to you know, have it distracting on this page while you're trying to show someone this on the other. So I, I don't like this necessarily. I just don't like the bleed through. I don't like what it does to the pages, etc. So I moved to something different. I got a colored pencil, and this is a, you know, Pentel. It's got, I don't know how many different colors of LEDs. You can see it's gotten quite a bit of use over the years. In Nepal, I got to where I was using this to mark up the passages in a Bible that I would give to new believers. And uh, if the pages are thicker, it's good. But again, this can make the pages um, wavy. It, it takes extra pressure depending on what color you're using, etc. And while this works, it's not as bright. It's not as strong when it comes to coloring. So this is an option. This is better, in my opinion, than what you get with the you know Bic 
you know, the, the colors that you get here. And I still use this for a number of things, but it's just not my preference. So then I found the, oh, leave out here, these gel uh, markers. And these gel markers, they have, I mean, they're a gel sort of thing. Now, if you look at this one, I got this one out because it's not my favorite. I don't even know what the brand is. It's some Chinese thing that I picked up when I was in Nepal, uh, when I lived there. And it worked, you know, well, I used it and I appreciate it over these other ones, but it just, it is dry. It leaves all these little crumb things. It can be annoying. And uh, there are nicer quality ones. This one I probably paid 30, 40 cents for, I don't know, something like that. And, and it works. And I use this when I take notes on paper where it doesn't matter, etc. But when it comes to marking in my Bible, I look for something a little bit nicer. And I found these others, I, I think I got these off of uh, Amazon. It was a pack of, you know, four or five, I don't know. There were several colors. I gave the, the girly ones to my wife, but, you know, pay, pay no attention to, you know, the writing on sides, but they're just a nicer, less dried out and you know plus it's also a, a smaller tip on, on it as well but i found that these work really well now when it comes to gel highlighters uh there are downsides to any of these when it comes to gel highlighters you've got to be careful that you don't put it on too thick you don't slather it on and that could be hard to do you know if you don't exactly center it you're going to end up coming back for a second swipe there's going to be extra on there you're going to leave and what will happen is when you close the page the opposite side of it is going to have some left on it. Now, looking at this one, it, it doesn't have any on this. You know, I did it thin enough there. There are some, though, that you can find in my Bible where I mark it over. And now you can barely see, but there are hints of yellow on this. You know, and what I found really helps with this is, you know, number one, try to put it on lightly. But when you get done, take a sticky note. You know, and particularly one that you don't necessarily love or care for the color. <laughs> I like to use purple. It comes in a pack sometimes. Uh, and I'll take that and I'll put the sticky side on top of that highlighted portion. And what it does is when you take it off, there will be some yellow on the back of that you know, tab. But it picks up any of that excess so that when you close the page, it doesn't end up sticking to the page opposite. And it's just a little tip, and I'll stick it in there. You don't have to leave it in for a day or two. You can just stick it in for a little bit and use that sticky to take some of that extra gel off of it. So when it comes to the actual highlighting, my personal preference is you know, I just like to have a high-quality gel highlighter to highlight the verses that I'm using. Now, you'll see some of the verses I'm using in a minute, but I do somewhat co color coordinate. I use a yellow for the general gospel presentation, you know, some of the verses around the gospel. I use a green for verses that I go with uh, a person after salvation for, you know, new growth, etc. And then I'll use blue for, you guessed it, baptism. You know, just uh, obviously the color of water. It makes sense in my mind, at least. Green for new growth, blue for baptism, and then yellow is the general one. That's for the gospel. And that's what I use these you know, colors for. Now, let's talk about some of the verses that we mark here. Now, this is going to be very dependent on what you use, uh, how you show someone the gospel. You're going to mark up, you know, which ones are uh, tabbed for you, which ones you're using most commonly. I was telling someone the other day that when we were in Nepal, one of the most common passages I would use uh, and have to thumb too quickly uh, was about idols, you know, Having eyes, they see not, ears, they hear not, those, that passage there. And I, I would, you know, thumb different passages than I do here in the U.S. And maybe in different communities, in different areas, the, the markings, the verses, you know, the uh, objections you encounter are going to be different. So just adjust accordingly. This is what I'm using here. So I'll try to go through this as quickly as possible without necessarily laying out the gospel. But these are the three most common uh, passages that I'm running to. This is First John 5.13. For by grace are you saved. I'm sorry, <laughs> that's Ephesians 2, 8, 9. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. And the reason I love this one, and I get to this one probably the most commonly, is because I want people to know that it is possible to know for sure that you're on your way to heaven. And if they don't know that, and a lot of people have you know that doubt in their mind already at the beginning, if they don't know that, there's no point in continuing. And then there's that curiosity. Well, how do you know that? Of course, it comes from the Word of God. These things have I written unto you. And then you take them to what does the Bible say? Second one I have here 
Ephesians 2, 8, 9. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. I hope that you don't quote it as fast as I'm saying here. Obviously, you want to say this slowly and, and uh, I don't want to say legibly, but clearly enough for people to understand when you're saying it and quoting it and showing people. But this passage here, you know, answers the objection that so many people will say, I, yeah, I'm on my way to heaven. I'm a good person. I, you know, I think that my good outweighs my bad, et cetera, et cetera. Just, you know, showing them that it's not of works. It's not uh, the things that we do ourselves that get us to heaven. That Answering that objection. And of course, whenever you answer objections, we'll talk about this another time, do it in an agreeable way. You don't, wrong, gotcha there, you know. So, <laughs> but these are some of the common objections. And that's why I've got First John 5, 13, um, Ephesians 2, 8, 9. And then, of course, when it comes to sharing the gospel, we've got Romans 3, 23 is where I start into that and talking about sin. And personally, when I you know go through the gospel, there are a number of verses that I'll bring in depending on a person's understanding and where they're at, etc. But normally, I'm starting with Romans 3, 23. Moving on to um, Romans you know, 5, 8. And I'm sorry, 5, 12. And, you know, wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world and death by sin and so death passed upon all men for that all have sinned and talking about that sin nature that we have and then we talk about you know death you know romans chapter 6 and verse 23 and again i don't want to take you through the plan but romans 6 23 is one that i'll mark up and have ready then i'll take them over to um revelation 21 and i want them to see in verse 14 this is the second death when we talk about death here the wages of sin is death i want them to understand, you know, that death is talking about that eternal punishment and the, the lake of fire. And then I'll come back here into, you know, Romans and I'll look at Romans 6, 23, finish that up normally, that verse right there, the gift of God is eternal life. We'll talk about sometimes what that gift entails, Ephesians 2, 8, 9 again, but I like to get over to Romans 5, 8, but God commendeth his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And, you know, we'll move on from there to the um, Romans chapter 10 and you know, verses 9 through 13. And I actually mark, when I mark those, I'll often, you know, lead them just through 9, 10, and 13 personally. But then at that point, after I get through the gospel presentation, after, you know, maybe someone has trusted Christ as their Savior, you know, if that's something that happens. And of course, the numbers are, are just crazy. You know, how many times you're going to share the gospel before you see one person who is at that point where they're ready to accept Christ as their Savior. You know, and I'm not going to get into, you know, the pressure and the taxes and all that sort of thing. But I'll say that obviously this is, you know, not the most common thing that you even get to the end of the gospel presentation, let alone get to assurance verses. And that's where I typically will take people to next. I'm looking generally, uh, the biggest one that I take people to is in John. Now, I don't have this marked in my, with tabs, but I typically am taking them to John 10, 28, 29. And I give unto them eternal life. They shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. That's one that I love. John 3, uh, 36 is another one that's you know, a, a great you know, assurance verse. And I even like you know, right away in Romans chapter uh, 10, verses 9 uh, through 13, just to say, you know, have you called upon the name of the Lord with a heart of faith? Okay, well, what does it say? You know, and, and just use that as an assurance verse also. But once I go through some of these assurance verses, I want them to understand that there's a major change that has, you know, happened in their life. And there are some steps moving forward here. And I want them to go and, you know, often see in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, you know, let's go ahead and see this here. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Now, these are not all, you know, tabbed or, you know, coordinated. I don't necessarily have an order that I always go in, but, you know, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And there's a big change. There are some things that are going to uh, be changing in your life moving forward. And then I like to take him to uh, 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. He talks about it, and I love this illustration people see here. It's not easy to show with the camera and the angle here, but as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. And I tell them, you know, the Bible says that you're a newborn babe, you know, you're growing. And there is a, a command here to desire the sincere milk of the word, to spend time in God's word. And that's the most important thing that a new believer can do is be in God's word, hearing from God how he can grow. And then, of course, I love to take people over to, you know, Hebrews chapter 10 and, um, uh, Verse 25, 
not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching, and show the importance of spending time with other believers, hearing from God's word in the Lord's house, and you know, moving forward in that area. So we talked about the gospel presentation, we've talked about assurance, we've talked about new birth, and I don't know if you can see, but it is a greener color there. Then we've got baptism verses, and the baptism verses I typically go to, I'm not going to turn to every one of them here, but I like to go to Matthew 28, 19, you know, go ye into all, there, and it talks about the command that people be baptized. That's something that God, you know, wants people to be baptized. Then we look at Romans 6, and we look at the explanation of what is baptism. Uh, it's, a, it's a picture, and we talk about that. Then we go to Acts chapter 8, the Ethiopian eunuch, and his baptism with Philip, and we look at the example there of baptism. So they see that it's immersion, what it is, it's after salvation. You know, there's, you know, it, it's a picture. I love the idea of an example or an illustration of it. And then I like to go to Acts 2.41, beginning there about those that, you know, gladly received his word, were baptized, and, you know, and talk about how it happened the same day, and use that as, you know, it's something that ought to happen, you know, quickly and soon. Have you gladly received God's word? Well, that's the next step of obedience, and, you know, that's the baptism. Uh, those are the passages that I typically use as I lead someone, you know, through those. So the only other category, and it's not something that happens following that, but I have several verses that I use for objection. I mentioned earlier, I've got some of them tabbed, but we've got the gospel presentation. We've got the uh, the new birth and uh, growth passages. We've got the baptism passages, but for objections, I typically uh, go to three. I've got, again, 1 John 5. You know, Nobody can know that for sure. 1 John 5, 13. I, I'd love to show you this. Uh, Ephesians 2, 8, and 9 it talks about works, people trusting in their works. And then another one that I like to get to and and I'll show you in here, and it's not something that I use, you know, as commonly as others, but Hebrews 9, 27, you know, and just to show people sometimes, I don't know if it's objection, but the urgency, and as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment, maybe someone takes it flippantly, doesn't take it seriously, and just remind them, hey, one day, we're all going to die, we're all going to stand in judgment, we're going to give an answer, it is something that does need to be considered, and again, these are most of the verses. There are a couple other little ones that I'll throw in there, but these are the verses that I use when it comes to marking up my Bible. This is how I get to my Bible. Uh, what are some verses that you use? We'll, we'll look at the gospel presentation, what that looks like for me in, in general in another video, but I hope this is helpful when it comes to marking up a soul winner's Bible.